Fun fact, one of the very first video games to ever be released on CD was Street Fighter. No, no, not Street Fighter 2. I mean Street Fighter 1, also known as Fighting Street. You know, the bad one. This arcade port was not released for PCs though. In fact, it released on a platform that predated the earliest known CD-based games for PC. This is the PC Engine CD-ROM ROM system, first released in 1988. Specifically, this here is the second model, the PC Engine Super CD-ROM ROM. And yes, despite how the name is formatted, that's what this thing is called. Not the Super CD-ROM 2, not the Super CD-ROM Squared, the Super CD-ROM ROM. This variant of the system is notable for looking like a sleek gray spaceship, and also for being able to play both basic CD-ROM ROM games and Super CD-ROM ROM games. But wait, what's the difference between those two formats? How many different CD versions of the PC Engine CD-ROM ROM system are there? Are you going to take a shot every time I say the term ROM ROM? Well, all of this and more will be answered soon. This is Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. Today's video, the weird world of PC Engine CD games. Before we can dive into the CD-ROM ROM platform itself, we have to briefly cover the system it was made as an add-on for. While many folks consider the 16-bit generation of gaming to have begun with the release of the Sega Genesis in 1989, that is not actually the case. I mean, if we're going to be real, the Japanese version of the Genesis, the Mega Drive, launched in 1988. And, if we're willing to bring computers into the mix, platforms such as the Commodore Amiga were out as early as 1985. The NEC PC Engine, however, would see release in 1987 in Japan, becoming what many would consider to be the very first of the 16-bit game consoles. This is mostly due to it releasing North America the same year as the Genesis, where it was renamed the TurboGrafx-16. Cause you see, 16, 16-bit, makes sense, right? Well, on first sight, it does appear to be a 16-bit platform, having graphics that appear much richer than those found the likes of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Except, it's not 16-bit. I mean, sure, it can be argued that its video chips are working in 16-bits, but I'm pretty sure that's not how that whole Bit Wars thing worked. The PC Engine, and by extension the TurboGrafx-16, though we'll just go with the PC Engine name here to keep this video as simple as possible, runs off of a Hudson Soft Hue C6280 CPU. This is an 8-bit CPU with an 8-bit data bus. Really, the 16-bit marketing slant mostly just came due to releasing this thing so late in North America. But in 1987 when the PCE released in Japan, its main competition was the Nintendo Famicom, the Japanese version of the NES. PCE games were special due to the cartridges they came on. These were credit card size carts known as Hue cards, and they'd been in development by Hudson Soft since around 1984. Hudson had actually test piloted the platform in 1985 with a range of similar cards for MSX computers known as B cards. But the Hue card format would get its big break with the release of the PC Engine in 1987. Small, sleek, oddly futuristic even today, these cards appeared quite impressive, even if they had some major drawbacks. For example, cartridges for rival systems could have batteries built in to allow progress to be saved in games. However, that just was not possible with Hue cards. Though the PC Engine would later become a huge hit in Japan, those at NEC and Hudson Soft clearly wanted to push the envelope with their system. They wanted the PCE to be able to do something that no other console could. And, they had just the compact medium in mind to do so. A compact disc format, if you will. First launched on the 4th of December 1988, this was the PC Engine CD ROM ROM format. There were two games available at launch too. There was Noriko, not Noriko, sorry if I butchered that, which was based around a teenage pop idol that I'm unfamiliar with. And there was also the aforementioned dud of a fighting game, Fighting Street. Surprisingly, despite add-on formats such as the later Sega CD and Atari Jaguar CD formats being massive flops, the PC Engine CD was a resounding success in Japan, with hundreds of titles seeing release on the platform over the next decade. However, 
Success or not, the CD-ROM ROM format still had its quirks. For example, you could not use a standalone CD-ROM ROM unit to play games. There's no way to connect an original one of these to a PC system. Really, without the proper adapter, it's just a glorified music CD player. To play games on it, you need this, the interface unit. Why it was split up like this, I'm unsure, though I heard somewhere that this was due to tax reasons. Awkward as that sounds though, the unit and an original model white PC engine look great together when they're hooked up like this. The interface unit also comes with a cover that allows you to seal up your setup and carry it around with a handle like a briefcase, GameCube eat your heart out. I don't have one of those on hand though, but if you want to learn more about the internals of an original PC Engine CD ROM ROM system, then definitely check out Retro Man Cave's restoration series. CD based games definitely had some advantages over their cartridge counterparts. The most apparent of these is Red Book Audio. Sure, CD games could still contain chiptune music that sounded like that found in any regular Hue card game, but if you're making a CD game, why would you go that route? Seriously, the soundtracks found in games such as Easebook 1 and 2 helped mold those into just incredible experiences that are absolutely unforgettable. Just take a look at the intro to Easebook 1 and 2 here. East, the ideal utopia. Once a country so peaceful and prosperous. A country where children were as free as the wind. A country where harmony blew through the hearts of all men. That's not to mention the inclusion of voice acting in some games as well. I mean, sure, it was the late 80s slash early 90s, most voice acting games of this era was dreadful, and that especially goes for the likes of Final Zone 2. At the same time though, I love the voice acting in these games. I don't know what it is, but the overall hamminess here never ceases to bring a smile to my face. Top, call off your mission. Bowie, the Zods! Hanson? And as the Ease clip showed, some games featured really great voice acting, though such titles were few and far between. The overall PC Engine CD system would also make its way stateside, where it was known as a Turbo CD. Actually, if I'm going to be honest, the clip that you saw from Easebook 1 and 2 earlier was a Turbo CD version. Also, at this point, I need to mention one of the oddest quirks of this platform. System cards. In order to actually play PCE games off CD, you need one of these special Hue cards to boot up the CD system. Without getting too far into specifics, something something bio something something I bet someone at NEC had to act dead for a year for tax purposes something. This original version of the card was System Card 1.0, and it was soon after succeeded by the overall better System Cards 2.0 and then 2.1. The main upgrade that came with these was karaoke disc support, along with the 2.1 card being able to auto-detect disc swaps. The 2.1 card was also the first System Card to be sold by itself, and really, they're better than the version 1.0 card in basically every way. I say basically because for some reason the PCE version of Altered Beast will only run if you're using the 1.0 system card. The first major revision of the system card would come with the release of the version 3.0 BIOS in 1991. Along with this came a few new pieces of hardware. The first was the PC Engine Duo, released as the Turbo Duo in North America. This was a 2-in-1 system that could play both Hue card games and CD games, with native support for both original CD ROM ROM titles and new Super CD titles that required the version 3.0 software. And yes, you heard that right, exclusive titles. This BIOS upgrades the amount of buffer RAM from 64 kilobytes to a whopping 256 kilobytes. Trust me, it was a big jump at the time. For those not caring about the technical bits though, the main thing of note with Super CD games is that, if played in an original PCE CD or Turbo CD unit with an earlier system card, you'll just get an error message. Thankfully, for those with older PCE CD ROM ROM systems, there is another system card available, known as the Super System Card. This contains that newer version of the BIOS. It was also built into the later PC Engine Duo R and Duo RX systems, which are more reliable, cooler looking versions of the Duo. I don't know what it is about that sleek white design, but it's very appealing. Sony should use that for the PS5 or something. 
This brings us to my personal PC Engine CD-ROM ROM unit. Specifically, this is the PC Engine Super CD-ROM ROM system. Doesn't that name just roll off the tongue? Anyways, what's there to say about this thing? It's sleek. It's grey. It has body accents. It has a pop-up CD-ROM tray. And it looks absolutely wonderful when paired with the later core graphics versions of the PC Engine. As for my original white PCE, well, it, it clashes a bit. Not counting burned games, as this platform has zero copy protection, I only own one PCE CD game. That's Lords of the Rising Sun here, which is actually rather fun. Specifically, this is a North American Turbo CD game. Now, if this was a Hue card game, I'd be out of luck if I tried to play it on this system, as Hue cards are region locked. But the same cannot be said for CD games. There is no region locking, no copy protection. If you own one of these in a stack of blank CDs, then burn titles away to your heart's content. It's definitely the best way to explore this platform's library nowadays if you insist on using real hardware. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the PC Engine. I really do. And I usually think that piracy is bad. But also, most of these games have never seen proper re-releases on newer platforms, and upon checking eBay, I can confirm that physical copies of many of them, well, they make my wallet weep. Burn discs are the best way to go. Either that, or trying something such as the Super SD System 3, which lets you play games off an SD card. But also, that thing is also expensive. And I don't own one. With all of that said though, there's something to be said for original hardware. And honestly, though it perhaps could use a little bit of a clean, I love my Super CD ROM ROM system. Sure, unlike the 2-in-1 systems, it does require its own power supply, in addition to that used by the base PCE. But it's nice enough to not only allow me to play most CD games without a system card, but it also allows me to output gameplay from my PCE using something better than RF out. There's also this extension saw on the bottom that's a complete mystery to me, so I think I'll just leave it be for now. There's actually two more system cards to keep in mind. Well, actually three. The first two of these are the arcade cards, which released in 1994. These allow you to play all previous PCE CD games, super or otherwise, along with new, beefed up arcade card games. Yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of those. Mostly, these are fighting games, along with a port of Strider that would be prime art of failure material, along with the excellent shoot 'em up Sapphire. There are two varieties of the arcade card, the Arcade Card Pro and Arcade Card Duo. For some reason, the Pro card only works properly on the original CD-ROM-ROM -ROM system and the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM system. It, for some reason, just doesn't work properly on the 2-in-1 consoles. As such, that's why the Duo card was made. Overall, it's a cool card, but one that I'd mostly just recommend to collectors due to the high price of entry, especially compared to other system cards and units anyways. The final of these cards is actually an unofficial card, and it's one that only ever had four games that were made to take advantage of it. Created by infamous developer Game Express, this was the aptly titled Game Express card. It allowed the user to play these games, which were all also made by Game Express, which appeared to just be too hot for any C and Hudson Soft to handle. And by too hot to handle, I mean that they were all hentai. Oh my. Personally though, this isn't a buying guide like I regularly do, and I just hope that this video can convince more folks to give PCE CD games a shot. As a tech enthusiast, I will always encourage those who are interested in doing so to get the real original hardware. But also, PCE stuff is just so expensive and sought after, that I think that emulation options are especially worth exploring here. A lot of the gameplay featured throughout this video was actually captured through OpenEMU for Mac, and it worked great. Just keep in mind that, in order to emulate CD games, you will also need copies of the system card BIOSes as well. And before anyone asks, no, I won't tell you where to find those things online. Google is your friend here. For those wanting something official but not wanting to spend a lot of money, allow me to point you in the direction of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini and PC Engine Mini. Both of these have similar lineups, featuring around 60 different titles both from the US and Japanese libraries. 
These systems also have their own quirks, but I think that's to be expected with these mini consoles. Mostly, this has to do with sound delay here. If you really want to see everything that these mini systems have to offer and want to see if they're right for you, then I highly recommend checking out GameSack's recent video on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. For those wanting to play PC ECD games in HD off the real discs, but not wanting to invest in upscalers and old expensive systems, then I'd recommend looking into the Polymega. This is a CD-based console that's releasing later this year that can play a ton of CD-based games from a variety of systems. This includes PC Engine CD games. From what I've seen from those with beta units, all PC Engine games, no matter the system card required, seem to run on this just fine. Well, all except the Game Express card games. But trust me, you really don't need to play those. And for those wanting to completely go with official, old school NEC hardware, I cannot stress enough how awesome the PC Engine Duo R and Duo RX are. Reliable, sleek, complete with built-in Super System Card support, this is truly the ultimate way to experience PC Engine games with real hardware, though it comes at a price. PCE stuff in general is far from cheap. That's especially so if you want to play multiplayer games. Oh yeah, one last thing. All versions of the PC Engine only had one controller port. So, for those wanting to hop into some Bomberman, a multi-tap is a must. On that note, I have to mention how my journey into the strange and wonderful world of PC Engine CD games would have been impossible without longtime channel supporters and friends Robert and Abby Hornerbrook. Along with being awesome Patreon patrons, they actually sent me this unit as a surprise back around Christmas last year. I don't know what it is about the Super CD ROM ROM system, but it somehow still looks futuristic to me in 2020. It quite literally looks like a massive engine hooked onto the back of my little white 8-bit box here. This system truly makes my PC Engine setup rev to life. But with that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to my other Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members. They, of course, are Justin Chipman, The Golden Bolt, Dylan Ola, Eli Cole, and G to the Next Level. Their support means the world, especially right now, and if you'd like to learn more about either of those places, then the links to those are both in the description and the pinned comment. So with that, thank you very much for watching, stay classy, and I'll see you next time.